The last thing that I wanted to show you, because we're kind of running out of time, is projection texture mapping, and that's something that people have been talking about since the beginning of Krakatoa, and wasn't really possible in Krakatoa for Maya in its initial uh, implementation, because camera mapping in Maya is done in a completely different way than the shaders in Max. So uh, we've done these demos since the very beginning of uh, Krakatoa. In 2006 in Boston for SIGGRAPH, we showed our very first test, um, which uh, became very, very popular, and that's the mini uh, dissolving. So this is what it looks like. Might be a little bit slow when it's playing back uh, again through uh, the uh, go to webinar. But uh, it basically, the idea was we took a existing mesh, uh, which was uh, a model from the Italian job previsualization, and uh, we distributed particles on the surface. We rendered it first with Brazil, or you can use mental ray, V-ray, whatever, uh, to do a ray traced uh, rendering, and saved it to disk as an image sequence. Then we uh, created camera projection mapping coordinates from the uh, same camera and uh, projected it onto the particles. But in the particles, we recorded the original position, the birth position, and uh, particle that was moving away from uh, its original position was still reading the pixel from wherever the car was originally rendered. So those pixels are sticky. Uh, that means the color, as the car is uh, dissolving, are uh, actually uh, being taken from the original birth position, and that makes the color stick. And uh, we did exactly the same using magma in uh, the following example. Uh, basically, uh, I took once again the Stanford Bunny as my mesh, because it's popular, and it's cute, and it's uh, easy to work with. And um, here is the scene that we have. It will take uh, a little bit to load because it has some million particles already pre-saved uh, with the Maya scene. I mean, it generates uh, on the, the first frame a bunch. And when it's there, now we have it. Um, not going to even render this because I have already rendered animation which I can show you, but I'll explain what I did. Uh, here is the particle system. Um, let me see. That's the particles. And uh, the only thing that I really had to draw here in order to get the birth position is I created an expression. Uh, let me see if I can grab it because it's behind the window here. Uh, this one takes the, uh, sets the RGB PP to the birth position. That means whenever a particle gets born at creation time, it gets copied into the color channel. And that gives me where the particle was born to keep track of that when the particle starts moving away. Uh, inside my magma object here, we'll select this and we'll take a look at the magmas that we have. We have uh, one magma which says, let's do, let's read the color from the original particles, which is the uh, birth position technically in this case, convert it to world space and do some calculations with the camera using the field of view, or you can calculate the field of view from the uh, focal length, but in this case, uh, I just had called it because the camera wasn't animated. Uh, and you have to uh, do some multiplications. This is the aspect ratio in order to get the uh, UV coordinates projected correctly. And in the end, uh, end up with texture coordinates that, if uh, rendered, are going to uh, show me exactly, let's update this, um, uh, I'm going, they're going to uh, produce let me render this and show you what it produces, actually. Emission, and I'll hit render and hope that uh, I'll do the right thing. No, actually, it won't, because this guy should be turned off first. That's the texture that's trying to get the channel that doesn't exist. So this is what we're getting. These are the camera projected coordinates, where uh, this is 0, 0, this is 1, 0, and this is 0, 1, and that's 1, 1. So you see the green going up and the red going there, and it's based on the original birth position. So if I go to a much later frame, which will take a while, so I won't show you, uh, these colors will start uh, following the particle as it's moving away. And this value is being used then by um, regular applied texture to set the emission channel from, to the based on the texture code channel using a regular um, just a file texture in Maya, and this is the rendering that I did in the software renderer. In fact, if I go to the render settings of uh, uh, my scene and render the scene with the Maya software, this is what I get. And if I switch now to Krikatoa 
and render with the current settings. Hopefully, I enabled everything. No, I didn't. If I enable this guy and then I render, it will take a little bit longer because it's creating millions of particles. But once the projection is there, what you're getting is exactly the same. But once you animate it, it will start actually dissolving into smoke because my particles were animated. And in the beginning, uh, they look just like the Maya rendering. And then they are reading from that text over here in the texture. When this particle from the ear goes there, it's still reading from the same point. So the color sticks. And uh, then it uh, produces kind of uh, smoky effect uh, where the colors are sticky. If it was very colorful with checker map or some uh, neat texture on it, it would uh, still, uh, you'll be able to resolve all the texture detail moving in space with uh, this texture. We've done this, uh, actually um, we had uh, a shot in a show which was for Twilight where Edward Cullen was an apparition on the water and we did a fluid simulation, did the camera uh, projection onto the particles and then when the fluid simulation gets disturbed, uh, the pixels moved around in 3D, so it was volumetrically correct and that's some effect that is pixel pushing but in 3D and it's trickier to do in other applications. You can probably do it in Nuke but you don't really want to render 100 million particles in Nuke. So um, this is pretty much uh, the demonstration for today. The, the, we did the dissolving of an object and um, I had a more advanced version where I was also blending the density based on the distance to the original bird position so particles moving away would slowly dissipate, like turn off. But it turned out it's not looking that much better and I'm just using the base setup for now.